Welcome to Cosplay Stitch and Seam. I'm Pannon. I'm V Fire. And I'm David. Hooray! Yay! <laughs> we, we made it! We finally we made, made it! it. <laughs> <laughs> After a few reschedulings and 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 busy and all kinds of craziness, we are finally here. Yay! Yay! And and a little tired. <laughs> a lot, a lot of tired, <laughs> a but lot yeah. Of tired. Um, well welcome to the episode everybody if you listeners at home would like to reach out you can always do that at cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com or or you can go to the website cosplaystitchandseam.com and fill out the googly google form or go to our facebook page and while you're there join our work in progress wednesdays join the awesome community that we have built up around this this silly little show talking about some fantastic hobbies that we try and pick up along the way and if you're not a big fan of facebook that's totally fine we have a discord channel that we are very proud of uh there was there was an interaction that uh i want i just wanted to give a quick shout out where it could have gotten like a little personal but mm. both parties were were very good about saying like, hey, this is where I'm coming from. This is where you're coming from. I think both of us need to do more research. Uh, but let's change the topic now. And it was like none of the admins or us mods had to get involved. It was fantastic. I love our community so sinking much. Mm. Yeah, I think I saw that. Community. That was good. So good. Such good people. Yeah. Um, plus, like, super helpful. Like, whenever I'm like, hey, does anyone have a reference of this? Someone always pops in with like, oh, I have like five. So <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. And then, um, like, we do work in progress Wednesdays on our Facebook group. But on the Discord, um, I think people are a little more comfortable sharing like multiple images and progress throughout the week. And it's just mm -hmm. it's really fun to see projects coming along. There's Definitely. a work in progress Wednesday on there, but it's like every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every day is work in progress Wednesday. It's it's oh. really, really great. Yeah. And if you're already on the internet trying to join our uh, Discord, we'll drop a link on our Facebook and our Twitter every now and again. Um, and there's some if you want to support the show, they we have a bunch of different ways. Word of mouth is great. Leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Audible. I'm trying to think of all the things that are you can leave a podcast pod chaser. There are many different ways where you can leave those reviews and those help us out a lot. Uh, we also will accept any donation that you feel. We have a coffee account, KOFI Cosplay Stitch and a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash cosplay stitch. For $3 a month, we give you a shout out on the show. And for $5 a month, you can join our cosplay chronicles. Oh. Chronicles, chronicles. Ah! <laughs> I'm very stressed. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know why you would be. I don't know why you'd be so stressed at all. <laughs> Thanks, we didn't it's, end like, on a it's, like, it's like the fun kind of stress, though, because like I step away from the gaming table and I'm like, oh, that was fun. OK, <laughs> <laughs> it's the good stress. Yeah, oh, that's you stress, oh, yeah. you stress yeah. instead of distress. Yeah. <laughs> When's our next game, David? Yeah, uh, our, our next game is going to be on the 6th of June. And this will be really exciting because now that we're all immunized, we will be able to actually play in person again for the for, uh, first time ever. Uh, it'll be great. I cannot wait uh, so to excited. see all of your beautiful faces. Yes. All the faces. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm so excited to like actually see friends in person. It's been too long. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, last announcement. Um, as always, foxbeautycosmetics.com. That's F O X X beautycosmetics.com. Use the promo code Stitch and Seam to receive 10% off your purchase. All vegan, not tested on animal products. I actually like tested out a lot of their stuff during the live streams that we do because I, mm -hmm. I, I, I love getting to play around with these products. Um, and like, we are not sponsored or anything. We just, enjoy them yes which as a shout out like if any of you creators want to like get on the show like send us an email um we love seeing like how cosplayers have branched out and used their skills in all mm. kinds of like fun and interesting ways um so yeah if you want a little talk about what you're working on like please hit us up do it yeah so what are we talking about today well this week is a cut above the rest since our <laughs> featured <laughs> material oh, 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 is uh, cutting tools. I didn't want to limit it to just like scissors because there's so many things you can use. 
um, and oh, so many yes. reasons you need them. And honestly, it's like one of the first things you do is, and one of the scariest steps is cutting into stuff. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh, it really is. Like you just like you get the whole pattern laid out, and you're staring at it, and you're like, "I cut this, <laughs> and that's it." <laughs> like there is no like, real life undo. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yes. There's oh man. Did I tell you guys I was drawing on an actual piece of paper the other day, and I tried to like do the undo <laughs> button, and I was like, "What am I doing? Use an eraser." Oh. <laughs> oh, that's too good. That's too good. Oh. No, I, and like, it doesn't even matter what material you're using. You're gonna cut stuff down or mm. carve it into some shape, and mm -hmm. all that needs some sort of cutting tool. Yep. Oh, definitely, definitely. You want to make sure you're using the right one for the right job. Otherwise, if you're using the wrong one for the wrong job, then you get exactly. seamstresses that want to kill you for using their <laughs> fabric scissors <laughs> on not fabric scissors <laughs> for fabric only. <laughs> Paper scissors for paper only. Um, uh, I'm a I actually have two pairs of fabric only scissors now, and I'm so proud nice. of them. I have only cut fabric with them. I'm proud of myself. Hey, <laughs> wow. good job. Yeah. I try, and then sometimes I'm like, <laughs> I just need scissors. It's just a tiny thing. It'll be fine. I think what helps is that I have like five other pairs of scissors that I use as my junk scissors to cut whatever mm. with. Mm. Yeah, and that helps that I have like so many of those that I'm never tempted to grab the fabric scissors. <laughs> oh, good idea, good idea. Uh, um, so, scissors. quick history of cutting yeah. tools. So, I saw this in your notes, and it's super interesting. I'm really excited for this. Yeah, so archaeologists discovered sharp edge tools as long as two and two and a half million years ago, um, which is even older than our species, which I thought was really cool. I did not know like uh, our bipedal ancestors had figured out how to use the pointy objects, but it totally makes sense. Freaking awesome. Uh, they were cosplaying back then, though. Like, they're, that's... <laughs> they're cosplaying like, I'm cosplaying a dinosaur. Just look at this, this hey. skeleton I found. I'm going to wear it on my head and I'm going to be it. I'm a <laughs> I mean, rock. I don't know. I'm a rock. <laughs> I Dude, that's be a the rock. best rock I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the earliest known scissors, uh, at least that I could find, were uh, Mesopotamia about 3,000, 4,000 years ago. Um, and those were the spring scissor type. So if you've ever used mm. like the little like snips that you use just for thread cutting, and it's just mm -hmm. like a pinch blade, that's the kind of scissors they were. Okay. Oh, and then the cute, pivoted cute. scissors, where the blades have like a screw in the middle... Uh, mm -hmm. Those were around 100 AD, apparently invented by the Romans. And then they entered common use in uh, not just ancient Rome, but also China, Japan, Korea. And the idea is, of course, still used in almost all modern scissors, because if it's not broke, <laughs> don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> it works, really. It's amazing how many tools we use these days that are like not all that different from where they started out. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I have a pair of mechanical scissors. Like, oh. you plug it in. And it goes, bzz, 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 and it cuts for me. Oh, I would be huh. so scared that I would like <laughs> put that's my finger in it or them. something. <laughs> Dude, that's why I never use them, uh, but I have them. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, my uh, uh, step grandmother gave them to me, and I just was oh, like, nice. "This is so cool!" And I used it once, and I was like, "This is terrifying." <laughs> wow. Um, I mean, it's not like like huge scissors. Like it's like kind of like small little snips on the end but like it's enough to like cut through the fabric so that you don't have mm. to like kill your hands cutting out a bunch of stuff oh, so totally, if yeah. i ever have a ton of patterns i need to cut out i will pull that out so i'm not like killing my hands mm. but that makes for sense. now it just sits and looks pretty well i'd say it looks pretty but it's like this pink color <laughs> like a <laughs> faded old person pink color Hey, um, pink is fine. Pink is fine, but it's like that <laughs> plastic and it's faded over time and it's just kind of mm. like sort of flesh tone too. And you're like, Ugh. vintage. Um, <laughs> it's vintage, <laughs> yes. Well worn. <laughs> so, I don't think it's pretty, but it's definitely pretty <laughs> useful. <laughs> hey, nice. There nice we save. go. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about like what kinds of cutting implements there are out out there and available for us Ooh. to use please remember safety first cut oh, away yeah. from yourself but not towards your other hand oh geez yeah yes <laughs> yes i have so uh, many finger thumb. scars <laughs> yeah uh, anytime that that my wife is handling a knife i i have to look away because just 
Oh my gosh, the the Boy Scout in me cannot like watch Zier oh, man. cut uh, anything because then it's just like, uh, but mm, okay, well, I'll I'll get my keys oh, no. and I'm ready to go to the hospital at any moment. Oh, now. No. <laughs> if we ever get to do another live show, like I'm going to show people like just how many little like exacto knife <laughs> thingies I have on my poor fingers, and most yeah. of them are from when I was learning to carve in like middle school. <laughs> nice yeah yeah it was it was not smart um but anyway uh, i thought we'd break it up into uh bladed tools and scissor type tools in the blades i've got our rotary cutter which is like a blade in all directions um your seam rippers for fabric (laughs) yeah it is a pizza cutter (laughs) for fabric um your seam rippers your exactos your box cutters like Attack on Titan Blades, um, your art <laughs> knife, uh, like hobby knife. That's the one with the like little blades you can switch out that are very small and triangular usually. Um, mm-hmm. We've got saws, like rotary saws, jigsaws, hand saws. Um, and I should have looked this up, but whatever the blade you put into your, into your Cricut paper cutter, vinyl cutter machines <laughs> also. Yeah. Any that Sweet. I forgot? Uh, I'm not thinking of any right off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, no, I think I think you you like, get you got a good uh good amount. Yeah, <laughs> good amount. there's like there's yeah. different kinds of box cutters out there. Uh, oh yeah, find one that feels good in your hand. You're not gonna like hurt yeah. your wrist with. For sure, there's some out there that have some really nice grips, and mm-hmm. uh, it's well worth spending the money to get them because your wrists will thank you later. Mm. Uh, True. My husband's got one that I really like, and I really need to get myself my own one. But I'll just go mm-hmm. and borrow his. Uh, <laughs> and then, like with the seam ripper, uh, I've always used them wrong. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and I saw a video the other day, and I was like, "Oh, what have I been did have, doing? Did you have the pointy end down?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> wait what uh-huh. wait so, what so so uh uh seam ripper it's I got that like, like just be violent with them when i break them all the time too <laughs> it's got kind of like them. a a cup shape right so it's got like yeah. one end that's pointed and a shorter end that has like a bead on the end usually does mm-hmm. the bead go up uh n- no the bead goes underneath your fabric so that it's not cutting anything on the underside as you're pushing through yep and, I and the pointy the end way. stays above, so you don't accidentally, like, invisibly cut things. I essentially would stab the fabric with it. Just <laughs> my, like, my like, brain hurts. takes forever. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, I, I'm a weenie, and I just use, like, the itty-bitty scissors. I barely use seam rippers, because I get... I'll, I'll get impatient, and I'll just rip it. <laughs> mm. Um, now i want to ask on rotary cutters like i have Mm. some really nice ones and oh nice they're still sharp because i don't use them because i don't know how like what to use them for like i have a cutting mat i have fabric but like i know that like you can use it to cut out patterns but i usually just grab a pair of scissors for that Mm. like Mm. so the type of fabrics that are really good for rotary cutters are the most obnoxious ones, those really slippery fabrics like satins and chiffons and things. You notice when you cut them with scissors, you kind of have to lift them up at the side. And sometimes your edges don't line up anymore. And sometimes it just slides all over the place if you don't like put a million okay. pins in it. Um, with a rotary cutter, you can put weights down on the fabric and then just roll it without uh, lifting the fabric up off the ground. Um, I feel like an idiot. And now. it has a more precise cut that way. Aside from the seam ripper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that I mean, makes a not, lot of sense. Yeah, that makes a lot There's not really sense, a though. wrong way to use it, but um, mm-hmm. it's also really good for if you're doing a lot of like quilting kind of things or things with a lot of straight edges uh, because you can put a ruler up against it and your cutting oh, yeah, mat and, just, and then just get great straight lines. Mm, very yes. smart. Yeah. So it's awesome. all about knowing what tool you want for the job and like how you want to use it. Yeah, it's like I, I can talk more about like the the jigsaw and handsaw. Oh, for sure. The rotary. We will saws. get into that... those. Do you want to hit us with some scissor types? Uh, yeah. Let's do some scissor types. Um, 
So scissor types. We've got sewing scissors. Which are your which fabric are scissors. Fabric <laughs> only. <laughs> uh, only. Your thread snips, which are also for fabric only. Um, I have a pair of ruined thread snips because I was like, sure, I'm going to use this to cut wire. Don't. Oh, um, no. <laughs> they're forever ruined. Oh, no. Um, heavy duty tin snips, which is what you should use to cut wire and also wire cutters for cutting wire. And those all uh-huh. come in like different strengths, uh, depending on like what you're trying to cut. Uh, mm. you just kind of keep an eye on that. Again, your hands will thank you later if you use the right one. Mm-hmm. Uh, PVC cutters. Which is, you I know, love for those pipes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they meant, like, I <sighs> did not realize that there was a way to cut PVC before. So I was usually going at it with a handsaw. And yeah, then yeah. they're like, oh, there's this easy tool where you just kind of crank it till it closes and it cuts your PVC in like really sharp mm-hmm. little lines. I was like, oh. Yeah, it's so nice. So minimal um, cleanup too. Like you don't right. have to like you don't get all the fuzzies from the yeah. hands on. Right. Oh, it's so good. Yes. Yeah. Thinning shears. Uh oh, pinking shears, which is like the zigzaggy, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, zigzaggy yep. ones and hair cutting shears. Huh. Again, all of these should be used for their intended purpose so that you're not ruining them because keeping a sharp blade is important. Yeah, it's like you wouldn't think that you could mess up something that's just a sharp edge, but they're used for so many different things and like they work the best for the project they're intended for and mm-hmm. you can really hurt the tool if you're using it for the one it's not. Yeah. I actually have a pair of scissors dedicated just for my wigs. Nice. Yeah, uh, me too. I have a whole... Yeah. A bandolier of uh, of uh, hair cutting tools. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll sometimes pick up something else and use it on them. Um, but those scissors only get used for wigs and when I am frustrated and want to cut my own hair. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you saw Goodness. you saw me at that other job uh-huh. when I just grabbed a pair of scissors and cut my hair. So uh-huh. when my uh-huh. bangs get in my eyes, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with mercedes <laughs> and then my bangs look terrible oh <laughs> so you mentioned the rotary cutter and we touched on that one for fabric so i thought we would use or i thought we would hit how to do uh bladed tools in fabrics first and then move on to the other ones oh yeah because there's also the blade in uh like sergers you gotta take good care yeah. of yeah Oh, you know, that's a good one. I didn't even mention that. Yeah, I just thought of that because I just looked at my surgery and I was like, ooh, do you have the sharp thing in there? <laughs> yes. Um, and not everybody knows you can replace that. You can move it around. You can get it to cut closer to the edge. So all kinds of fun stuff you can do with the surgery blade. I will never yeah. touch it. <laughs> Don't touch it. Okay. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just, uh, just too scared to. If I ever need to do something with fair. it, I'll go ask my uh, sewing machine maintenance dude. <laughs> That's a smart idea also. <laughs> Hitting back the rotary cutter. Um, I forgot to mention, you can also use it on foams to get nice straight lines. At least if they're the thinner foams. If you're going anything more than a few millimeters, you probably want to get a uh, box cutter or, or an actual like art knife. But... You can you can use it to get nice straight lines on your thin pieces. I used to um, I would use it to get like really straight thin little like strippy pieces when I was doing like accents around props, um, oh, and I wanted yeah. them to be like only a couple millimeters wide and to all match. And this was before they had like awesome cosplay like just strips of foam you could buy, <laughs> <laughs> but but it can be used that way. You don't have to necessarily buy it you can just make it at home nice yep yeah save yourself a little couple of bit little bit of money there we go absolutely and, uh, do it yourself it does take time though so mm-hmm. time versus money on that one yeah um yeah the if you're using the rotary cutter on foam just be aware that foam dulls blades uh, yes absolutely. and so like you can have a rotary cutter for foam and one for your fabric um just don't ever mix them up. Uh, and then, like, keeping blades sharp. There's places you can go yes. that will sharpen blades for you. Uh, yes. If it's a sewing machine blade, like the serger, um, talk to your maintenance people about how to, like, replace those and or sharpen them up so that you can extend the life of those. Uh, getting yourself, like, your own sharpening tools 
uh, learn how to use them and take good care of like uh, your own sharpening tools. Uh, I have yet to try and do that myself because mm-hmm. it's it's a precise thing. You can't just rub the blade and be like, ha ha, because you could scratch it up really bad. Yeah. Um, it's keeping your blade sharp is a skill in and of itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. like honestly it, it's it's a good thing to like practice on like a cheap go to go to a secondhand store and buy like a, a cheap kitchen knife oh, yes. and uh-huh. get a little whetstone and and i mean an actual whetstone make sure that you're getting uh uh something simple this is something that i i do quite frequently i would try to make sure that all of the knives in my house are consistently sharp because a sharp knife is a safe knife um mm-hmm. and uh yeah don't want to don't want to repeat of the time that i was making jambalaya and i Got to see my own bones. Ouch. Um, oh, David, um, no. Yeah. Oh, 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 no. For anyone who doesn't know why a sharp knife is a safe knife, um, dull knives uh, shred more than cut cleanly. And it can be really bad for you. Yeah. So. That is true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no, like what you said, keep them sharp. Um, Save your sharpest scissors for like your synthetic fabrics and tighter weaves. And if you're not using a rotary cutter, things like your satins and your spandexes and your chiffons and things like that. Because mm-hmm. um, you will have an easier time cutting those with a sharp blade and they will give you a lot less strife in the end. Um, <laughs> yeah, sharp tools, it, it makes such a huge difference when you are cutting with sharp tools just yeah as as an overall lesson for this entire episode like please keep your sharp tools sharp so with uh uh what was i gonna say thread snips um those are if you've never used a pair of thread snips and just like use your big scissors to cut when you're pulling stuff off a machine it can be a lot easier and more handy to use they're just a little tiny uh Thread snips are, like I was talking about earlier, they're a little like spring action tool. um, And they're usually like just small and handheld. Uh, They're much, much smaller than a regular pair of scissors. And they're made to cut thread quickly uh, Mm -hmm. rather than having to grab your scissors, use your whole hand and a big blade. You're just using a tiny one to cut close to your fabric. Um, And it's much faster that way. Yeah, it helps speed up the process if you're like, you know, trying to be efficient with what you're doing. Um, yeah and like it also is like it's it's not as hard on your hands as like a full pair of scissors is too so it's true it kind of helps with the wear and tear of your your joints <laughs> yeah. yeah be nice to your hands you need yeah. those oh i had a nightmare my hands fell off <laughs> oh no I just what does it mean that. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got for sewing um a seam ripper obviously mm-hmm. for ripping seams yeah. It's, use it, it's primary use it right. purpose. Look at Make sure you up. use it with the beaded side under your fabric. Dude, um, it goes so much faster too than just trying to stab the crap out of your fabric. <laughs> it does. I mean, the pointed end you can use to like stick in and like get a starting point if you're just trying to do like one at a time. But you don't need be a little to do more it precise. For the whole seam. <laughs> no, 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 no. How much time <laughs> like have it, I wasted? Oh, How man. much time? <laughs> oh, like it's already feels like punishment enough when you have to rip a seam, but when you mm. do it like one at a time, it's just like torturous. Yeah. Ooh. Um, and then Mercedes, you mentioned pinking shears, uh, which are those zigzag cut. I think we've talked about those a little bit with how to yeah. like finish a garment edge. Mm-hmm. Um, but what that does is it's uh it's similar to when you cut like a ribbon, uh, and you cut it on an angle. Instead of cutting it straight across because it will fray that way, right? Um, So it's the same idea with fabric since it's also a woven textile. Um, It's cutting your fabric so that it won't fray out like a straight seam would, if that makes sense. Not as easily anyways. So yeah, well, yeah, it will will break down over time, but it's great for having a properly finished edge. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. And makes it last a lot longer. Let's see. I think that's it for fabric. Yeah. I mean, that's one of, of the else. primary fabric tools. But yeah. I can't yeah. think of really anything else along those lines. Cut the fabric. Uh, the snips are also really great for doing embroidery. Oh, uh, yes. Like the little, the little scissors. Because like, uh-huh. you can be doing a bunch of embroidery and just snip, snip, snip as you go along. 
You, you know what? Using a um, the thing is, is just, sorry. <laughs> no, you're okay. And so, you know, on like, whenever I have to take embroidery or hand sewing on an airplane, I'm always like really paranoid that my, even my tiny snips will be like too long of a blade to go on. So <laughs> I will take fingernail clippers. <laughs> And just, oh. like, and just take those with me and like Unless snip the they thread don't with let that. those on anymore. <laughs> oh no. I think they're as tiny and harmless as they could possibly be. Yeah. Um, but I, I've done that. I've done that. I've done that where I've just been sitting in my bed embroidering and I'm like, hmm, I need to cut this. I didn't grab my scissors. And then I'll see this nail clippers on the dresser right. and I'll be like, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> After I, I just finished saying, like, use the right tool for the job, <laughs> unless you're panning and you do. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, we, anyway. we swear we do as we say. <laughs> no, we don't. Most, most of the time. Most of the time. This is like advice found from many, many mess ups. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about cutting tools in armor and props. Yeah. Uh, yes. The areas that I know more about. Ha ha. Yes. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Nice. What's your what's your favorite, David? Uh so I just I really like is a bandsaw because I can get a long line of a straight cut out of my foam in an Ooh. instant. Um it's a little scary because if you don't have a uh, a guardrail of some sort then um then you can like really have a wobbly line but man mm-hmm. it cut through some foam so stinking easily oh man i was so excited when i first got oh, to use man. it um, yeah i bet yeah, it cuts it, it like butter man oh yes. not not even like butter like it it's not even there <laughs> like it just whew, and it's gone yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> Uh, when I made uh, the kid from Bastion, uh, mm-hmm. his hammer, I actually took my bandsaw and created 45 degree angles on it and cut the foam for the hammer that way so that I could create oh, a box. Oh, smart. Yeah. Yeah, smart. So nice. Ooh, speaking of 45 degree angles, mm-hmm. um, if you don't have a nice bandsaw at home or even a jigsaw at home that you can do that with, um, they make 45 degree foam cutters now that you can just like... It has all the bumpers on it, and you can just slide it through your foam, and it cuts it at a forty-five degree angle for you. I which love just that. Blows my mind. It's so cool. Oh, I'm gonna go throw my jig away <laughs> <laughs> because I made a jig. <laughs> I made a jig for my my uh um. Oh, what is the thing called? See, now I'm uh-huh. forgetting what things are called. My box cutter. <laughs> uh-huh. I forgot what a box cutter was called. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I made a jig for that based off of a video that I saw online. I can't remember who I was watching. I think it might have been. It was probably Evil Ted. Uh, but uh, yeah, I made myself a jig so I could do 45 degree angles and then uh, tried doing it, failed at it, and then was like, bandsaw! <laughs> Nice. 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 So for someone looking to get started with some of those heavy duty cutting machines, um, what do you guys suggest for a beginner? <sighs> Get a friend and learn from them. That mm. way, like, you don't have to invest any money in it. You can try it out, see if you like it. And you'll also have somebody there watching you in case anything terrible happens and they can keep you from doing something terrible. Again, we've all heard oh. my horror story about my thumb in the bandsaw. So, oh, yeah. no, 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 um, no, no, yeah. no. Also, I would suggest, so if you're cutting foam... Uh, and you want to be starting out with that kind of stuff, use use the box cutters. Um, start with that. Because uh, mm. power tools, I wouldn't suggest using a jigsaw. That's a hand tool on foam uh, because it just moves around too much. It's great for yeah. wood because you can secure that, but it's going to jump all over the place and destroy your foam if you try mm. it on foam. Uh, a scroll saw is probably cheaper than a bandsaw and you can put a bunch of different blades in it depending on what kind of kind you get but you can put a bunch of blades in it that's a great one to start with for foam um it's a little slower got to take your time and you might have to create your own jigs for doing super straight lines uh so mercedes let me stop you there um what is a jig just for people who know nothing at all whatsoever about your your fancy machines 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so a jig is uh, something that you can either purchase or make yourself that helps hold pieces in place so that you can do the thing that you need to do without getting your hands ow, sorry, too close um, to the blade. Uh, so like I've got jigs where it's literally a piece of wood that pushes the piece of wood for me through a blade so that I hmm. can keep my thumbs away from everything. Smart. Uh, Smart. Um, I have a jig that holds uh, the piece of wood or foam, whichever thing I'm doing, in place, and I can push it along and it'll cut a certain angle for me or a certain shape. Uh, again, keeping me safe while doing it. And it's just like, there's a lot of different ones out there. Uh, usually if you just like look up woodworking jigs, uh, you'll mm. start finding examples of that. Um, and they're all useful, especially if you're trying to do something like complicated and you don't feel comfortable freehanding it. Um, you know, you can always look into see like if you can purchase something or build your own kind of like jig thing to help you um, do that. And it also can help speed up the process as well. You'll spend time oh, yeah. building the jig if you need to make a custom one, but it's worth it in the long run because it'll speed up the process. And I assume it would make like more accurate cuts too, because if you have oh, yes. like that same shape going through each time. Yes. How about you, David? Like, I know you said bandsaw is your favorite, but like, what did you start with, and what would you suggest to some of our people starting out? Um, honestly, I would I would suggest get a bunch of utility knives and uh, also a very cheap sharpener. Uh, you can get like a really decent one from Amazon that is like. Uh, a little bit larger than a pencil, and you can mm. run some quick passes over it to keep the blade sharp. It's um, it's a lot like a, a razor that you're trying to shave your your face, your legs, your arms, whatever, um, to try and make sure that like you want the cleanest cut that you can. And you'd start noticing pretty quickly that hey, this is catching a little bit more when I'm going on another pass. Maybe the blade is dulling. So mm -hmm. like knowing the minute the minute details before you move into the big power stuff is really helpful because then you know the texture that you're you're looking for you you recognize hey this cut isn't as clean why is that and when you start with the basics like a utility knife you're able to see um hey this blade is starting to go down I'll, let me sharpen it how does that impact this um so you have more of a basic knowledge um you know, you can't jump straight into calculus without a little basic algebra. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's that's a really good analogy. I like that. I, I was going to say, I really like that too, because like you're talking about like, you know, just hand blades and like keeping an eye on, oh, is it catching weird? Is it doing this weird? <sighs> Same thing with machine blades. Uh, watch what they're doing, because it may be a sign that they're getting old and you need to replace them. Uh, they're getting dull. They might snap. Um mm. And that's another thing too. If you guys are cutting on like a band saw or anything that's a uh, a big round saw or even a scroll saw, uh, be careful with how you turn your piece inside of it. Especially if you're using wood or plastic or anything that's harder. And if you try and turn it too much at an extreme angle, it might not be able to handle it, and you'll snap your blade. Mm. Uh, I've oh, done yeah. that. I've done that. It is so scary. It is very scary <laughs> on a. Big bandsaw. Oh, um, I bet. I've done oh, it I like bet. three times with plastic on um, my, well, it's ours now, but was oh, my father-in-law's bandsaw. And I yeah. uh, have felt terrible every time because I'm like, I always break it. Oh, no. So quick breakdown. What materials would you say are best for what blades? Um, utility knife is, is, again, the basics that I would recommend for foam. If you want to do some like something a little bit heavier, maybe like a thermal plastic, um, like uh, um, warbla, you can use regular like industrial scissors that you can get like from Home Depot. You might want to mm -hmm. get those because like the handle on those are going to be a lot a lot tougher. You can also get um, canical shears or tin snips, and they are designed with a bit of a spring to help. Like Panna mentioned, like it has kind of like a little bit of give. So that way when you squeeze it, it actually pushes back a little bit more. So oh, um, nice. you don't have to work Save your, your hand. hand. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> let, yeah. let the blades do the work. If you find you're fighting it, there's something there might be something wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. 
tin snips are also really great if you wanted to move into like something like a thin light metal if you're doing some decorative work on some, uh, something a little bit larger like maybe like uh, a shoulder piece or something uh, assuming it's allowed at your con or part of your costume that mm-hmm. would also be something that i would recommend i wouldn't recommend on big metal things a uh, power tools for uh, unless you really know what you're doing yes yeah, build up, build up them skills uh, with the tools. Be comfortable with the power tools before you start getting into like bigger and heavier stuff. And also know mm. what tools can do what. So like a bandsaw, depending on what one you buy and what kind of blade you put in it, because uh, there's different thicknesses of blades. Um, there's different, like and this is for scroll saw as well. Anything with a saw blade. How about that? I'm just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Table saw, bandsaw, any of those, jigsaw. Um, there's different kinds of blades that you can use. Uh, some are for making big, fast, rough cuts, uh, thinner, finer blades are for making nice smooth cuts and you have to go slower with those. Mm -hmm. Um, if you try pushing too fast on those, you'll break the blade. Um, and that's just no good for you, especially if they cost like $30. (laughs) Oh my gosh, $30. Um, it was a good blade. Um, (laughs) (laughs) take care of those blades and um, they'll take care of you. Um, But uh, like scroll saw, band saw, those ones are like, they're stationary. Um, Mm -hmm. They're really good for foam. You can also use uh, like plastics like Sintra or Celtec, depending on what brand of plastic you're using. You can cut those on there. Uh, If you go and purchase plastic, especially like the translucent ones that you can see through, or is it transparent? I don't know the difference between those two words. <laughs> I don't it, know. It, it, Hard plastic okay. that sometimes you can okay. see through it, sometimes you don't, and it's colored. Ask the place that you're purchasing from what tool to cut it. Because sometimes mm. they'll be like, yeah, you technically could cut it with a scroll saw, but you're going to want this blade on it. And you're going to want to go mm-hmm. really slow. Because mm-hmm. what will happen is that if you're using the wrong blade or you're going too fast and or both, it will crack the plastic. Uh, mm-hmm. And so if you're trying to make a sword that's supposed to look see-through, like it's made out of crystal, and you break it, you're going to have a crack through it, and it's really hard to hide that. Yeah. Um, Some so, of them will even cut that for you. Like, I know when I yes. did uh, a master sword that I wanted to, like, light up in the middle, mm-hmm. so I did, like, a plastic uh, vinyl sheet running through the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the shop, like I made a, uh, an image file for how I wanted them to cut it out. Uh, and the, I think it was like a vector file or something and they mm-hmm. just put it in their machine and it could cut in that exact shape. Yeah. Um, and even it was, it was thick too. It was like two or three millimeters thick plastic. So mm-hmm. you can always ask yeah. it, see, you know, might just cost a little extra to have them cut it. Uh, right. Delvey's when I made, um, my sword for Sayaka and it had that like, uh-huh. clear blue in the center. Um, Delvey's cut the uh, um, just like three inches of a bunch of that colored plastic for me. And then nice. I just went and layered it and, and finished cutting it out myself later. So nice. Um, but that helped get rid of like the scary initial, like I need to cut this. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, let's shift over to makeup and wigs for like two seconds before mm-hmm. we wrap oh, yeah. up. Cause that's yeah. definitely something where you use scissors. That's kind of like your your primary tool with styling, um, mm-hmm. uh, if, if you don't count hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just like how fabric scissors are for fabric, if you have like hair scissors or shears, those are for hair only because they are a lot finer, a lot sharper, um, and mm. made specifically to cut hair and have like less drag when you're cutting. So I cannot emphasize enough how much the right tool for the job helps on this one. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially if you're trying to get like accurate and very clean cuts. And if you haven't tried thinning shears before, they are awesome. My favorite use for them is whenever I'm doing a character that has like blunt cut bangs, like straight across the forehead. Because if you, you can just cut straight across, but it usually looks like a little unnatural. Um, But if you go in with the thinning shears, uh, you're cutting, uh, what it does is it kind of cuts like every other or every third hair kind of a thing. It's 
like, like not that precise, but it, it cuts the in-betweens so that you're getting a little bit more natural edges and finish um, mm-hmm. instead of everything the exact same length because hair isn't really like that, you know? I'm eating this up. I'm just so, okay, yes. Please, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, because you just barely styled your Harley wig. I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It needs to be thinned out so oh, desperately. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Um, thinning shears are also great if you get a wig that's too thick, um, and you just uh, want to lift up some of the under layers and thin it down some. Again, it is going to cut like every few hairs or like little tiny chunks in a more organic looking thing than trying to go in there and snip. Uh, snip that out yourself <laughs> mm. um, but yeah it, it, I like them because they give a lot more natural of a look I love um, it. it's just like fabric where it's one of those well you use the scissor to cut the hair and there are a yeah. couple types of scissor but that is and what you like, do you can look up like techniques and things on YouTube videos oh, for sure like right? how sure. to use each kind of scissor and like uh-huh. yeah and I really layering like and shears layers. yeah me too me too um it is definitely worth watching like haircutting tutorials on like how to like carefully hold the hair and brush the hair in different ways and put it mm-hmm. up. And when you're cutting across, um, like you notice when a hairstylist cuts your hair, they don't cut it straight across. They usually do like angled cuts, several little angled cuts. It's that mm-hmm. same sort of like learning the techniques that work best for a natural look. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I definitely suggest some tutorial videos on that. There's a lot of fun ones on YouTube. Um, I yeah. Love oh, wigs. Uh, also, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, also, uh, with some of the like crazier styles, you're going to use scissors or blades or other things we've mentioned before to make your structural pieces like foam. Yeah. I know for like when I do my pompadour kind of wigs, like for Josuke from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, um, that's just like a like practically a surfboard made of foam (laughs) that just like gets sewn or glued into the wig and then the hair wraps around the form and takes on the shape i want it um like you could of course do that with just styling but sometimes having those structural pieces inside can help with like it being styled permanently and long term so you're not Mm -hmm. having to do a bouffant thing every single time um yeah when I did uh, Seymour from Final Fantasy X, ten, ten, oh my not gosh, 10, that 10, hair! Um, it's got like these like wicked, crazy, crooked pigtail things. They're um, just like and weird as f looking, and you yeah. made them amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a lot of foam and a lot of styrofoam um, to keep it lightweight, and a lot of uh, carving stuff down to the right shapes that you need. So. Uh, yeah, so you'll use awesome. blades of all sorts on your wigs too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do we have any horror stories? Yes, we do. Got one from Stuff and Fluff Cosplay from Sweden. Oh, cool! Um, yeah. Hello to Sweden. Hello. So <laughs> here's here is Stuff and Fluff's story. So they've got two horror stories. They say so. My first horror story is that I found this pod a few weeks ago, and now I'm caught up. <laughs> <laughs> The horror. The horror. <laughs> My other horror story happened back in 2015. A couple of weeks before the con, I uh, st- uh, still sat in the sun with all my materials neatly piled up. First thing that happened, my sewing machine decided to go full on Pikachu and tried to electrocute me. So, <gasps> oh. oh no. Ooh. Ouch, ouch. So I had to sew all the seams in my bodysuit by hand. I also made ah. a set of armor, a big sword, and styled a wig. I had ignored my time-consuming fre- uh, sleep and instead filled the void with my two new besties, Coffee and Supernatural. Yeah. Oh, no. Um. I mean, <laughs> all, all are good in small quantities, but that much before a con. More. <laughs> Sounds like a, a recipe More. for disaster. More. <laughs> the hours went on and early in the morning, my friend picked me up. Still no sleep. But almost done. Drove for two hours. Oh. Remembered I forgot most how parts. How much of, of no my- sleep is that now? It's quite a bit. Quite sorry, a bit. sorry, keep going. Drove for two hours, remembered I'd forgotten most parts of my other <gasps> cosplay at my parents' oh no. house. 
thanks to my mother who called and asked what the furry abomination hanging in their yard was for. (laughs) Oh, no. So we stopped, waited for my parents to catch up with us. I cried as the 23-year-old woman I was and couldn't thank them enough. (laughs) So I bought them dinner before we parted ways. Now the weird things start to happen. The no sleep, much coffee, binge watching Supernatural life starter, start, lifestyle started to have side effects. Oh the no. Hallucinations began. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> first, uh, noticeable at the restaurant when I excitedly poked my friend and whispered how much the guy behind her looked like Sam. She looked <laughs> like I was she looked at me like I was crazy, which I probably was and declared that no, he did not look like Sam. A few hours later, we enter the con and everywhere I looked there they were, Sam and Dean. And not just, and not people cosplaying from Supernatural. No, everywhere. The staff crew, oh. the people serving food, the hotel staff. I was now going 36 hours without sleep and thought it was really amusing seeing the handsome boys everywhere. And uh, it was definitely time oh my to goodness. see. Oh Next my day, goodness. people blur back to themselves. And that was last year I con crunched. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they say like the longer you go without sleep, the more it's like you're drunk. So, oh, yes. Oh, man. I've been sleep drunk before. It's great. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's great. I meant, they say you devolve into essentially a nine-year-old. And uh-huh. I met the voice actress for Bulbasaur while I was sleep drunk. It was great. Oh, So no. I was like, I'm nine. I'm nine. I'm like, I love you. You're amazing. Can I have a, can you send my card? I'm going to buy this oh, card, man. but I need you to sign it. It was great. Oh. <laughs> I still have that. <laughs> Thank you for sending in that story. If you listeners at home have one you'd like to share with us, I am I would be more than happy to read it on the air. You can hit us up at uh, cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com or... Or you can go to the website, cosplaystitchandseam.com and fill out the googly Google form or... Or you can share it to our Facebook page. And while you're there, join our Work in Progress Wednesdays or just snag the link for our Discord. We recently had our live stream where we just watched a movie and we were we had a great so time fun. just like <laughs> having all of us there and then chatting with people in the chat room so we didn't have like too much uh too much crosstalk across the movie. Um and it's really great because then you can also like, wow, I really don't want to listen to David laugh and groan at how bad <laughs> that they are doing the rules in D&D. So you can like you can minimize my audio and then increase the audio of the playback. It's great. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I love Discord. Mm-hmm. Discord's the best. Um, but you can customize your experience. Exactly. While you're on the internet, however, you can uh, help us out by doing so many things. First, word of mouth. Share the uh, share the podcast with a friend if they need help or uh, getting started or anything along those lines. This is a really great resource, and we have a really awesome community that that wants to help people out. We also have uh, reviews that will help other people find us kind of naturally the you know and every internet interaction point helps us um find more people to join our community uh leaving reviews on apple podcast audible pod chaser wherever they let you we'll leave we'll even give you a shout out on the show um if we haven't gotten gotten your review let let us know reach out to us email us or uh contact us in any of the ways that we've talked about and we'll be more than happy to rectify that uh we also have a couple different ways we have our coffee account k-o-f-i uh cosplay stitch if you want to give us just you know a few bucks here and there or if you wanted to do our patreon where it is a recurring thing and at three dollars a month we give you a shout out on the show and at five dollars a month you get to join our cosplay chronicles our live DD game yay we don't keep it behind the paywall forever we do release the audio later on so don't if you can't make it we're not going to try and exclude anybody but it is an opportunity for more people to to join live and we have some really great opportunities to even influence the game for like next month i have a mm. poll coming up so that way some people can choose what might happen next month and it's going to be exciting Oh, oh no! Oh, Some no. of those people who get uh, who are going to be able to uh, help us uh, help make those decisions are Queer Eye, Sci Fi, Hal Cause, Hot Riku, Renamira, Jazzy Kofed, Jaguar Queen, Gloria Shu, Sudi, Stacy Pitt, Shock H, and Silver Deeds. Yay. I love those names. Thank you so much, All those guys. Names. Uh, I want to quickly throw out there uh, that if you turned in videos for the uh, Pass the Brush Challenge, uh, I have them. I Yay. will, again, be replying to those emails here soon, and we'll be uh, finishing up the editing in the next week or so. So expect to see the video on YouTube near the end of the month. 
Oh, I'm so wait. excited. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> we had so many that got turned in and they're all really great. That's like, so I good. absolutely love this. If any of you are like, oh man, I really wanted to do that still, go ahead and send it and I'll let you know if it makes it or not. I'm not going to be super strict about that, but <laughs> I am <laughs> editing now. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as always if you guys want to check out foxbeautycosmetics.com that's f-o-x-x beautycosmetics.com use the promo code stitch and seam to receive 10 percent off your order of all vegan not tested on animal products they're super fun and they just dropped their D&D line um thanks as always to macy roberts for the use of her theme song and david Yay, jeffers macy. for his awesome editing how are Yay, your podcasts david. going uh going super great dungeons and chill my real play DD podcast if you listen to the DD episodes here and you enjoy that style and you want something a little bit more gritty uh that is definitely where i do it it is again all still homebrewed for the most part with the exception of curse of strahd where we we're kind of doing a quarantine content but now that we've all got our shots we're, we're looking at coming back to the table oh, um yeah comic trades monthly where we talk about your favorite comic book in a book club format not just like hey spider-man's the coolest uh we talk about the complexities <laughs> of of having such a, a moral obligation weighing over your head and how everyone in a comic book probably just needs therapy uh yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. of course the last voice which has just come out uh we it's so great you guys i i'm really so proud of this i i hope that you guys go check it out because i'm so proud of it week uh gabe is, is on the 10th week at this point it's it's a uh, we started on week four and we're on week 10 as of now and uh, it's so good you guys i i hope that you're really enjoying it yeah it's so, good. I'm so uh, excited well that was a fun episode guys yeah mm. so uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh uh-oh i was like you're building up for something i'm waiting for it <laughs> 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 well i mean i was just wondering um, you know, mm-hmm. like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, right? Oh, um, does 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 he beat scissors? Well, no. Like, I was wondering <laughs> if he had like paper crafting shears. Would he call them the Rock's paper scissors? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's even better. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 the loose filament. I'm going to edit all of this out so I can seem smart for for a moment. (laughs) Um...